Well, good day, Max here again, and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to crack on with Project X. We have this our piece of 7057 alley, aluminum, aluminium, what have you. So we're going to machine up the base plate today for the bearing assembly that we made last week. So we'll get it marked out and bring you back. Okay, we've got our part marked out now using the brown and sharp surface gauge and our rotary table as a surface plate. Since we don't have a granite proper surface plate, AAA grade, well there'd be no point using one because we're only using a Z grade milling machine. So anyway, we're marked out. So what we've got to do, we'll band saw the corners off first. Then we have to bore the hole out in the middle, then we'll start the profiling operations. So we'll get it in the saw. Okay, so we're just squaring up our block using the um, just a cutter and the boring head, just like a fly cutter. So off we go. Come out very well that. Nice finish. We'll deburr that and Okay, so we'll take her, take her out the vise and flip it over and do a cleaning cut on the ends. Okay, we'll clean up the ends now. Let's see how they come up. We have to bring it back to 8 inches in length. So we'll touch off and take a cut.
Check out length. And a thirty second to go. About, a, about another thirty thou cut. Should be right. Double check our length. So smack on eight inches. It's only a rule of measurement, so that's good. Okay, so we'll deburr that and then we'll um, put a centre, use the mill to pick up off the edges to find the centre, exact centre of the piece. We'll put a centre drill hole in there and then we will chuck it up in the lathe. Okay, as well as the centre drilling we put in here for the alignment when we put it back into the lathe, we also have to drill a hole at either end. So I'll do those while it's in the mill. These holes will become slots for a mounting um, bolt. The other, while I'm doing these holes, if you've got a DRO it's easy, you can just go from one hole to the other. Or I don't have that so I'm, I'm down to counting the readings on the dial. But in doing so, so I don't end up to turn out, what I will do quite often if I can find it, where are we? Okay, the other part of this scribe line routine, we've marked the reading that we have on our dial, which is one millimetre reading on our dial. So all we have to do now to get back 160 millimetres to our other hole, we don't have to look at any measurements anymore, like counting the revolutions of the dials. All we do is go back approximately to 160 and get in here with the ruler. Okay, now our dial will land on the nearest whole number. And we can only be a millimetre out either way. So we take our measure from our scribe line to our scribe line and it puts us bang on 160 millimetre, which is where we need to be. So that's just a quick, quick and easy way of referencing a hole from one area to another without a DRO. Okay, we'll get our other hole drilled.
brush. Here we are. Okay, we're all set to cut some slots. Okay, it's time to cut our slots. switch over and use the flood coolant for these because it's too much of a handful trying to use that spray can all the time. Okay, that's our slot 5.8 wide cut. It's a three sided 5.8 end mill, that one. We're going 5.8 because on, on where this is going to be used on my larger mill, I'm going to be using 5.8 um, um, T slot studs. So, what I might do is I'll do the one at the other end. And then we'll just take a whisker, probably ten thou off, off either side, just for a bit of extra clearance. Okay, that's our slots cut to 5.8 clearance. Now we'll put a chamfering tool in. We'll just clean up the edges. Okay, that's the mounting slots cut in our aluminium aluminum block. So the next step is to get it mounted up in the lathe and bore the recess out for the bearing housing that we made the other day. 
So we'll get it mounted up in the lathe and bring you back. Okay, here's a shot of a unusual lathe accessory, which you don't see in use very often nowadays. This round thing is called a faceplate. So we'll get our part bolted up to that and you'll see how they work. Well, okay, we've got our part mounted up on, onto the faceplate. So we've just used a couple of strap clamps and the studs that, that come with the strap clamp kit. Now we've got it mounted on a couple of parallels because we have to put a through hole through here so we need some clearance for the boring bar in behind. Now normally I try and from doing a, a job like this try and use a parallel that's got holes in it. Because I wasn't born with three or four arms it makes it a lot easier when you're mounting the work up because you can sit that over, over one of your studs and jiggle it around. So, also, some of these jobs you'll set up in a, on a faceplate. You may need to use strap clamps with um, packers underneath them in, in, in different circumstances. And quite often it's easier to set the job up close to centre onto the faceplate before you mount the faceplate onto the lathe. That way you can nip everything down and just pick the whole shebang up work it in place and then true it up from there. So what we'll do, we'll put an indicator on the centre here and we'll indicate it in. I imagine it'll only be within, it'll be within one or two thou probably at the moment because we did use the lathe tailstock centre to hold everything in place. So we'll check it with an indicator and see how she comes out. Okay, we've got our indicator set up. So yeah, she's got a she's, oh, about 16 thou in that. So we'll just go from one side to the other. Just gently tap her around. Okay, that's um, within a thou. So nip the nuts up. Hopefully it won't move. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we're indicated in. That needle's hardly flickering, so that's good. So we'll get our hole put through. Touch up. Okay. Yeah, getting a bit on the blunt side that one, so we'll touch that up before we use it again. So we'll get our boring bar in.
Now what we've got to be careful of these mounting studs and nuts here that we don't hit the tool post when we bore through. So we just bring our tool up to the start of the hole, measure our, the depth that we need to bore before we hit the face plate. So we've got well, inch and three quarters to the face plate. So we've just got to make sure we have at least at least that to the before the tool post hits the mounting nuts. So we're good to go there. So we know we're not going to hit. Bring our speed up a bit. Stringy stuff, it leaves a, a really nice finish inside this um, 7050 aluminium. So we're um, inch and three eight. Just check, check on our drawing where we've got to be. We're looking for inch and five eight. So. Way to go yet? Yeah. Okay, that's our final cut. We'll take a measurement. One point six two five, right on the money. It's only a clearance hole, so it's not really that important. The important hole is the one we're going to do next, the recess to hold the bearing. But the finish you get off this material, it's absolutely amazing, you know, without even trying. Really nice stuff to work with. Okay, well, let's get our recess done. That's okay, we've just taken a, a light facing cut across there with the boring tool just so when we're hogging out the material we don't overshoot where we have to be. Now the depth that we have to go in is half an inch. So I'll touch off with the boring bar, come in half an inch.
Okay, we're just under half an inch there, so that's fine. <laughs> Okay, well we've got our recess ready for the final cut. Now, I did record it, but all I've got to offer is a bunch of stringy chips because the camera didn't record. So, we'll get a measurement on our diameter. So our final size Well, our part measures 3.7505. So as long as we uh, thou up on that, say, in the range of 3.051, that'll be nice. 3.0515. That'll give us nice push and slip fit clearance. We'll measure our, make sure we're zeroed. So according to our vernier, we are 3.750. So a thou and a half to come out, or a thou to come out. Now there's another way to measure these before these things came around. With the old manual ones. And lately, a few people on YouTube have been going on about calipers. Hear that? Outside calipers. This set is a set that my great grandfather made. All these. Spring calipers. These are good for measuring inside grooves. So you might be machining a groove for a wearing in the gland of a hydraulic cylinder or something. But these are still reasonably modern. Or we go a bit more the vintage style. Uh, this set was uh, my father's. So this is the tap tap calipers we call them. So, to use them, it's just, I don't know if the light's going off. Use them in the same manner as a, as a bore gauge. So you're just rocking from side to side. So if you want to open them out a tad, all we do is just give them a tap. Come out a fair way more. And just rock it from side to side as you're moving in and out. And you'll get your size. All relative to the feel you use, of course. It takes a lot of a lot of practice to use these things. I think we're on the money there. So we'll put a check our size. Three point seven five zero. Just got to use the same feel when you measure. The, with the mic as you're using in the hole. And just feel that skimming over that. So that's 3.750. Double check in our hole. So 
So buy the calipers, the old school, and this is the old school method, 3.750. And what do we have on our calipers? Three point seven five zero. So you can be very accurate with these old tools. It's just a matter of using them a lot, developing a feel for the, for them, so. and just the methods to get the fine adjustment. So to increase the diameter, you just give it a couple of taps on the back. And if you've gone a bit too far, just. Couple of taps that way. Now, so we'll take our thou out of there. Oh, and we'll just check our depth because we had to be half an inch deep plus 10 to 15 thou extra for a clean up because we have still have to take a clean up cut across this face. So we are 12 and a half thou over our half inch required distance so that's what leaves a 12 and a half hour cleanup cut along the face so we'll take our one thou out of there and this part will be done <laughs>